to go work for us. The big question is, you know, what do I got to do? You know, what do I got to do? I got to do things differently and and learn new techniques, new materials, and yada, 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 yada. Uh, initially, when they first, um, uh, uh, digital dentures first came out, there was all kinds of little games we had to play to, in order to get into these um, workflows and things. But uh, basically, no. I mean, clinically, your, your materials and techniques um, initially, it really very little change. Uh, or any change at all. And I'm going to focus on four particular workflows and uh, start with what I refer to as the traditional wax rim bite workflow. <clears throat> and basically, if we reflect back to our traditional workflow, and, you know, this is what's been time honored and time taught in our dental schools where we take our preliminary impressions and get pour them up and do, you know, get the custom trays and full, you know, final impression back and forth, back and forth, um, all the way typically with a five appointment procedure back to an insertion. Well, we could do the same thing, but stop. Uh, we could do our wax rim bite registration. If that's your comfort level at this particular uh, time, fine. Stop. And this could be our entry point into the denture process. Uh, and very, very easily, uh, if we look at our uh, traditional wax rim bite, and what is it? Well, uh, it should be uh, a your your basically your prescription. And what you when you deliver a wax rim bite to the laboratory, they look at this as the, a guide to setting the teeth. The um, midline, the incisal edge length of the upper and lower teeth, the occlusal plane, the centric occlusion, vertical dimension, it's all recorded here. So this information is captured in this wax rim bite. So we start here with our traditional impressions and wax rim bite, and we could scan that. And once it's scanned, we have a virtual um, models that are mounted according to the wax rim bite registration. And we have the wax rim that we could utilize as a guide for, in this case, starting with uh, setting the occlusal plane. So we're looking at this crosshair here is basically um, uh, we're translating that information into the midline, the inclination of the midline, the occlusal plane, the the um, interpupillary line. It's a lot of incisal length of the maxillary teeth. So a lot of things are really um, uh, captured from this wax rim and then translated into the process of setting teeth. And yes, we could ghost in this wax rim at any of the time that we were positioning the teeth and, and we could make corrections um, accordingly. Um, uh, we're making the assumption that the wax rim is where you want the teeth to be. At times, maybe um, we start setting the teeth. You might get a phone call, and you might get a phone call like I got the other day, and and um, uh, I I gave the other day to one of my colleagues that did a wax rim um, bite. And gosh, I said I'm not sh quite sure you want me to put those teeth um, as far forward as you did in your wax rim. We looked at it together and. By golly, it was a little far forward. So, um, so sometimes you can make changes, but at least it's a point of reference and a point of easy, easy communication to go back and forth on. And again, we'll do a, a try-in in this case with a resin try-in, which we'll get, we'll get into a little more detail in a little bit, and then to a final denture. So this is a workflow, a wax rim bite workflow, very friendly. You didn't change anything really. Um, the um, uh, other than the try-in being a resin try-in as opposed to a wax try-in, and we'll get into that because that's probably the you know, the major um, intro uh, introduction of a new uh, way of thinking is when we get to the try-in stage. But short of that, everything pretty much is uh, standardized. A couple of tips with this particular technique, and this, this is referred to as a rim former. And if you don't have this little device, it's a very inexpensive device, but it's a wonderful tool in the laboratory uh, and in the clinic to adjust the wax rim. Uh, so when you try in your wax rims, if you want to shorten it and, 
and typically we ask the laboratory to make it a little bit longer so you have an opportunity to shorten it and it's got a little handler fence that helps guide the process there's a lot of you can get more of this information from our websites and things but but what the rim former is just a marvelous little tool to have in your armamentarium uh, another is a, a fox plane of sorts we have which we, we refer to as the bite plane and it's a way of amplifying the rim as you're um, making changes to it to make sure that it uh, reflects the patient's bipupillary uh, line because that's that information is going to be given to the laboratory and that's what they're going to follow. And you have this opportunity to, to test this um, intraorally at this uh, particular stage. So these couple of little tools are, are, are great things to have as a, as a tip. All right, let's move on.